All right, um, welcome. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a um, a baby name generator website. Uh, fairly simple, quick to do. I was bored. I created this website, uh, this single page, and thought I'd share it with you. So it considered it, it consists of um, there's a background picture. There are a couple of um, controls, um, a button, a um, a uh, text field, and three um, three uh, radio button groups. Um, so, pretty much. Um, the user decides if he wants a male or female um, name um, and also distinguish between Chinese and American and then also uh, do you want just the first name or if you want the, the last name you select yes here um, and uh, yeah you once you uh, make your selection you hit generate um, and the name of the first of all the background pictures change to a cute baby <laughs> each time you you click it uh, the background changes um, also um, the name that is generated appears here let me show you now what happens when you says when when it says include last name if I hit generate now I have first and last name so for male American um, I've got Hayward Bishop full last full name uh, let's say what it, let's see what it would be for female I'm only changing uh, the gender uh, Benedicta Taggett Benedicta Taggett, sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's try the Chinese version. I cannot read it, but it's gonna generate it. All right, notice that it's changing here. Let's say f first name only. Now you're wondering, well, how did I get the Well, now you're probably wondering how did I get the the names. So pretty much what I did was I went on Makaru and I created a, a new schema pretty much uh, actually hold on all I needed was so for the boys I just say boy first name change click on the type select name and I went with first name and I generated a thousand. Uh, similarly, did the same thing for female. Um, female first name, as for the Americans, and generated another thousand. Um, for Chinese, surprisingly, this uh, Makaru also has names. It's got. Um, given names right so that's that's what I selected um, so a given name for Chinese first name and a family name for Chinese last name now um, as far as the, the gender um, I didn't really pick one uh, for the Asian names I uh, didn't know how to do that so full transparency here the Chinese names that is gonna populate will either be male or female regardless of what you pick okay um, and then also uh, the for the American version the last name I just 
checked last name here and for each of them I generated uh, I, I generated the uh, each field and then what I did was I just added them to my data so boy first name uh, girl first name last name those trends um, corresponds to the American versions and then I have Chinese first name Chinese last name those are not gender specific all right so a uh, quick recap of what we got this is my app um, generating a name oh and also if you're wondering the pictures I went online and got a couple pictures Let's see one two three four five six seven pictures and then you know just do a Google search baby pictures and whatever pictures you want um, you select put them here um, yeah uh, so this is this is what I've got so far um, as far as what am I using I am using material UI so um, these are the uh, what I've installed uh, just your basic and PX create react app and then I went to uh, material UI um, right here it's my framework that I'm using um, once you first get to it it's gonna bring you to this page just go to get started installation and right here just copy and paste this into your terminal I've already done that paste this into your terminal um, install the packages and then you are good to go something else that I did was I pretty much cleaned you know when you do npx create it gives you a bunch of crap that you don't need so I, I, I cleaned all of those so now that you, you see uh, my setup um, pretty much here's how I, how I have it I have um, this is my this is what the the f the final code is gonna look like and this is what my form looks like uh, this component right here is what you are seeing here at the bottom right here so um, yeah let us uh, let us do what we do so let's create that first um, we're gonna create a new folder actually we're gonna create a new file we're gonna do call it demo jsx and then we're going to do rfac um, all right so and we're just gonna say hello I am demo all right so we're gonna call this now in our um, app.js import demo from page demo demo and uh, instead of calling the final, which we saw, we're gonna start from scratch with the demo. And now our page refresh, and this is what we have. So for now, let's uh, Let's start. Um, also going to need, in addition to the demo, that JSX. I'm also going to need a form dot JSX. All right, and let's do RFCA. Is that what it does? 
arrow. Here we go. All right. The reason I do that is so that I can have both forms here and I don't need to open this again. So I can just navigate from here and here. All right. So we got our initial setup. First thing we're going to do is we're going to delete this and we're going to we're going to need fragment and remove my cursor and we're going to need use state. Use state not so much. Um, something else that we're going to need um, from material UI, we're going to need a, we're going to import um, styled. And we're going to import that from MUI material. Okay. Over here, we're going to call our fragment because we're going to have two element in we're going to be returning two elements inside here. The first thing we're going to return is an image. I'm going to get an error here because um, I haven't created the image yet. Uh, this image itself is going to be a self-closing component. So let's get rid of this. And we're going to return our form. For now, our form uh, is not going to take any parameters. Uh, let us also import, whoops, let's import our form from form. All right. Now, yes, our image is we're getting a compiling error because I am calling the image but I have not defined it yet so let's do that using our styled element that we're pulling from material UI so what we're not going to do is we are going to declare and define all right so we're going to do const image and we're going to do styled and we are passing your regular H image HTML. All right. And we're going to open two parentheses. We're going to do, uh, is it two parentheses? Yes, two parentheses. And we're going to do theme. All right. this and then we're going to give our image a width of a hundred percent of our page of our view um, actually not a hundred percent we're gonna give it a, a hundred percent of the view width um, actually I made a mistake here actually hold on and we're going to give it a height of a hundred. Whoops. So view height. And we're going to give it an opacity of 0.75. Why did I misspell height? I did not misspell height. So the reason that I'm getting the error here. I believe is because I skipped out on a parentheses here. If I plug it in here, we see that our error is gone. All right. Now, what we need to what we need to do is we are going to create our, we're going to pass over here, we're going to pass a source 
we're gonna call it BG. All right, and of course an image needs an alter alternate alternative. So we're gonna say baby pictures. Notice BG is triggering, itself is triggering an error. The reason for that is because I haven't defined it yet. So let us do that. We're gonna do, and that's this is this is where we're gonna use uh, hooks. We're gonna do const bg set bg use state. What are we passing for now? We're gonna pass a function random picture. All right, again. Our random picture is hmm. our random picture itself is create is a uh, our random picture itself is throwing an error. BG. Why am I misspelling stuff? All right. So let us now define our random picture. Const random picture equal to is equal to anonymous function for now we're going to return an empty array all right just to get rid of the error we're going to return an empty array i don't know if you can see it but there is a box right here That's supposed to be my picture, but since it's not displaying anything, the altern alternate um, is displaying baby pictures here. All right. So it is now time to import our pictures. So let's do that. We're going to be importing our pictures. The first one we're going to import is baby. And we're importing that from going back asset images and it's baby.jpg. And we're going to pass that into, we're passing that into our function. Should be getting a picture here. Oh, look at that cute little baby. So now we have our first picture. Let us import, let me see how many we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pictures. We've already uploaded one. So let us now upload the other seven. So I six, seven. All right, it is baby baby basket actually we're not calling it baby basket we're just doing basket and then over here we're doing baby basket and everything is jpeg so good um this one is feet feet this one is, um, let's call it twins two, twins two. Our next one is plush. And then ribbon. Which one have I not called yet? Um, 
ba, ba, ba. let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Missing one. We got baby, we got basket, we got feet. We need hands, feet. So hands, feet, hands, feet. We're saving. I'm getting an error. The reason I'm getting an error is because baby basket, baby here is capitalized, baby here is not. So let's solve that problem. Capitalize. And here we go. Um, let's reload. Each time I reload, I should be getting a new picture. I am not getting a new picture. <laughs> oh, silly you. I did not add them. So a basket. Feet, twins, two, plush, ribbon, hands, feet. So now that they're added to the array, every time I reload, I need to, I should be getting a new picture. not working properly. Let us see what's going on. <laughs> okay. Reason why I'm not returning a picture each time is because I am returning an entire array. What I should be doing is picking a random element from the array of pictures here. So, um, so let's create another, let's create another function. We're going to call that get random. Okay. Get random. Uh, we're going to make it a pretty much a generic, uh, function. Um, we're going to pass the array. To it and it's going to return a value and um, I could add all the logic inside of the random picture but I'm going to create a, a function so that way I can use that same get random function when I'm picking a random first or last name or whatever so uh, code ones use it multiple places so pretty much what we're going to do is we are going to return the same array that we passed um we're going to do math that floor and then inside of math that floor we're going to pass it a math that random all right we're going to times that by the length of our array that's going to give it the parameters, the max. All right. So, and now instead of our random pictures, we're going to say get random. And then we're going to pass it the array like this. Simple. Um, waiting for my page to reload and it reloads get a picture reloading again reloading oh, I'm, um, by the way I'm pressing F5 on the keyboard each time I do I get a new picture so my background is loading if I were to notice I'm getting full screen here all right oh so cute all 
All right. Now that we've done that, we are going to move to our form. So let's move to the form. Actually, um, before we move to the form, there are a couple stuff that we need to we need to do inside of our um, inside inside of this file. We're gonna create a few more. Um, we're gonna create a few more. Um, what do you call it? Actually, you know what? No, let's create the controls and then we'll we'll pass them. So inside of our form. Um, again, we are going to import styled, can't spell to save my life. We're importing that from MUI material. Um, what are we going to need? Well, we're going to need actually. Um, let's do it like this since we're importing all from material let's do a button let's do a grid we need a form control right we're gonna need typography we're also going to need form label we're going to need radio group as well as radio we're going to need a box. We're going to need form control label. And we're going to need a text field. All right. <clears throat> now that we've up, uh, done that, um, we are going to create what, what I called an item. Const item. Just like we did for the image, um, we're going to do styled. We're passing it a paper. And we'll, pass, we'll do a theme here. Open parentheses, open curly brackets. I'm getting an error here because I did not um, I did not import paper so let's do that now and for my item element I'm going to give it theme uh, typography body 2 padding theme I'm uh, going to give it a spacing of two, spacing two. We're going to text align. We're going to do that to the left. And we're going to give it a color, theme, palette. Our theme palette is going to, uh, we're going to get the text palette and it's going to be secondary. I'm getting an error here because I did not throw a comma. All right. Okay. I'm going to need a couple of things from my props. Before I, uh, uh, yeah, let's let's get it from props. I'm going to let's do props. Uh, I'm gonna do handle change. All right. I'm going to do params, and I'm gonna do generate name. Generate name. That's gonna be a function. I'm gonna get those from props, and also. I'm going to get need uh, const um, nationality, gender, name, 
gonna do include last name and all of that is going to be extracted from my params param short for parameter all right so um, instead of a div I'm gonna go with a box and I'm gonna give it some gonna give my box some styling um, you do some inline styling with material UI um, instead of doing instead of this we just do SX all right um, so we're gonna give it a flex grow of one a padding of two position okay gonna give it a position absolute the reason we're gonna do position absolute is because we want our this is gonna be our form and we want it to uh, to be on top of our image we don't want it to be at the bottom so it's gonna be an, uh, an overlay um, all right position is going to be whoops why did I spell position like that absolute um, we're gonna position it um, at the bottom we're gonna give it a 10 view height position and to the left mm -hmm, we're gonna give it a 10 view width and then as far as the actual width itself let's say 80 percent of the view width and we're going to sum it up with a margin of zero and that is our box why is this here expression expected oh position I misspelled position that's what's throwing errors here Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Let's X that out for now, because it's gonna throw some errors. All right, and within our box, we're gonna get a grid system. So container, spacing, we're gonna go with uh, two. All right. Um, so the first grid, the first grid item is going to be the full width. If it's on a small screen, but if it's on a medium or higher, we're going to give it four columns. All right. And here is our item. This item that we created here uh, from a paper with some styling yeah that's what we're using here so our item um, we're gonna give it a form control component a field set and a form label Form label is going to be a line to the left. Can't spell to save my life. A line to the left. And uh, component legend. I am legend. And gender. Actually, so we could see. Let's get rid of this. Closing tag here. I want you guys to see everything. And our radio group 
whoops a radio group we want it to align horizontally so we're gonna give it a row attribute pretty simple all right um before being compliant we gotta give it a label for um um screen reader so area label we're gonna say gender wait i closed this here a little bit too early um yeah gender default value we're gonna give that male uh, we're gonna give it a name male um, we're not gonna pass the value for it yet and we're not going to pass um, a method so the value okay value it should be gender and we should be pulling that from here but as we know because we haven't defined we haven't um, actually you know what let's do it like this um, yeah this is a little trick params we're gonna do params is equal to an empty object so that way now we can and uh, actually yeah to prevent any errors for now we're gonna do anonymous function for handle changes and for the generate name function we're also gonna pass it a an anonymous function as well so that way we can use it it's not going to do anything unless I pass it here in demo form. Uh, but at least for now, it's not going to trigger any errors. So if I save and reload, you see I'm not. It's not giving me any errors. But uh, just quick example: if I do this, here's my error. If I put it back, save and reload no error all right so as you notice i've got my label here it's already showing it's my label this item this right here is this entire thing right here all right so we have the label displaying now we need to pass the radio buttons oh before I do anything let's pass the function on change I'm gonna pass handle change and now we're moving on to the radio uh, buttons with material UI it's going to be a form control label because the lab the radio buttons need a, a label value Let's do mail, all right, and control. Actually, don't want it to go too far to the right. We're gonna pass it a radio. That's how we're doing that. We're gonna pass it a radio, and label is going to be mail. And then we're, this is gonna be a self-closing tag. Uh, let's do select this shift hold shift alt and press the down arrow one time and then we're going to let's, let's do a capital here I'm gonna do female and female all right now you'll notice over here save I'm getting my buttons all right next thing we are going to do is we are going pretty much going to do the same thing for the nationality so let's select this 
entire thing here. Hold Shift and Alt. And we're going to rename a few things. Uh, this gender right here is going to say nationality. Nationality. Same thing for the name. Default value, let's go with American. And the name, nationality. Um, the first one, American. Label, let's copy and paste here. And then we're going to say Chinese. Whoops. Chinese, Chinese. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. The reason it's, it's displaying like that is because I did not close this grid item here. I need to close this grid item and open a new one. Whoops. So let's open a new grid item. We're going to do 12 for small screen and then media, um, 4 for medium screen. Uh, let's delete that. And voila. It's showing like this because of the size of the screen. I have it all smooshed up. But if I maximize my screen, I'm getting the full of what I want. Okay, one more time, we're going to do our little magic trick here. Going to copy this whole thing, shift alt, down arrow one time, free hit save. We're going to have a duplicate of the nationality, so let's change that. Um, so what is this one going to say? It's going to just say include last name question mark. And let's just call this uh, include last name. Let's keep everything the same. Um, default is going to be false because that one is going to be a Boolean. All right. Our default value is going to be false. So let's do that. Name is going to be include last name. Value include last name. Oh wait. Um right here this is what we need. Oh, I put include name. It should be include last name. <laughs> include last name. Let's bring that down so you can see it. Value American. The first one is going to be yes. Yes. No. No. And here we go. All right. So this is what we have so far. We have our form. It is not done. We now have to put in our buttons. All right. So uh, we're going to create another grid item. This one is going to be. Um, it's going to take the full width. Uh, let's give it a style. Mm. Actually, let's do something a little bit different. Let's do, yeah, let's do style. Margin left, zero. All right, that's our grid. Um, let's do item. Item uh, 
uh, let's do another grid container this time. Another grid container. Whoops. Grid co container. I'm going to do a spacing of two. Oh, by the way, in case you're not familiar with Material UI, Material UI, the spacing, uh, its unit for spacing uh, is eight pixels. So if uh, this is considered um, 16 pixels spacing, right? Um, so we're going to do grid item. Um, this one for our button. If it's um, small screen, we're going to give it the full width. If it's not, let's say half screen, and then we're going to do button. A button, let's give it full width. And we're going to give it a size of large. Why not? And size large. I'm going to do unclick. And we're going to do generate name. That's that function that we had. And we're going to pass the variant of contained. And we're going to give it some text generate. All right. So that is our button. See that our button now appears I click on it I'm not getting any errors because this generate function even though it's not doing anything at the moment it is a generic it's a, it is a anonymous function that is not doing much but we're gonna take care of that soon um, We are going to create another grid item. We're going to give it the same width as our button. Six. And now we're going to use typography. By typography, we're going to align it. Eh. Actually, no. It's a text field that I need. Actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Let's do this one. Um, it's going to be the copyright that's supposed to be down below. And it's going to be full. Uh, we're going to do center. Uh, we're going to give it a variant of uh, subtitles 2. All right. And then we're going to do our little copyright copyright you know gotta copyright my own stuff here come on now and that little C uh, is ampersand copy semicolon and then we're gonna throw a little bit of a uh, JavaScript we're gonna do new date and from that new date we're gonna get the year get full year function right and then we're gonna pass it my name like this we're gonna pass it my name and we're gonna do all rights reserved that would be legit that is legit yeah let's do it like that and boom here it goes smack down at the bottom Except, except, I need to add some space here between the year and my first name. Easy way to do that. Here we go. All right. Now, where is our name going to be displayed? It should be displayed alongside the button. So let's do that. Actually, instead of six, let's do three. Copy this, paste at the bottom. 
nine instead of a button. It's going to be a text field. So text, whoops, text field. Our text field is going to have a label of name. I'm going to make it a small one, right? Small. What else we got? We're going to disable it because we're going to disable it because we don't really want the user to interact with it. We're going to give it the full width of the parent grid, um, grid item and we're going to pass it a value of name and we're going to make that a self-closing text field and here we go so here's the thing because i disabled it uh, text fields come with uh, floating labels because i disabled it it is not floating so the shortcut to that is we're going to do input label props and we're going to force it to shrink we'll force it to shrink our label automatically floats to the top all right so we are pretty much done with our form now all we have to do is go back to our demo go back to our demo and then do some things with these with the gender the name the include last name and the nationality all right okay Let's do that. All right. First thing first. We got a demo. We're going to create the params. Const params. Set params. Use state. That is going to be. A JavaScript object which is going to have nationality is equal to American by default gender is equal to male by default and include last name is going to equal to false by default so now I can actually go back and I don't need this to be generic anymore. It's displaying this error because I jumped a gun <clears throat> and I did not pass it here. So params is equal to params. Now we're not gonna have any issue, right? No issue. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the handle change function here. All right. So const handle change. Um, it's going to get receive an event. And we're going to deconstruct name and value from the event. So it's going to be event. So e for event dot target. All right. And pretty much what we are going to do, we're going to say set params. Um, we're going to be using the spread operator here. We're going to do dot 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 params and name value. It's a little bit of a shortcut. 
So this right here is essentially the same thing as doing this. Um, actually, param here needs to be capitalized. All right. So this is is, is essentially the same thing as doing previous return dot 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 previous name value see all of that shrunk to just one line of code all right now that we have our handle change we're going to come down here in our form we're going to pass our handle change handle change and we are so far so good all right um, next thing we're going to do is we pass the function so that when we click generate it generates the well we haven't do generate yet we've passed the function so that when we make our selections whether it is um, male female american yes no um we're registering that but what i'm noticing here is when i'm making a change here it is not changing so let's see what's going on with this for the gender The gender was not registering because the name was wrong. So now that I've changed that, when I click it, everything is working properly. Okay. All right. So we're now going back to demo. Let us now import our pictures. I'm um, sorry, not our pictures. We're going to import the names. So we're going to do import boy names, boy first names from, let's go back a couple, data, boy first name. Shift, Alt, down arrow four times. One, two, three, four. And this one is going to be, actually, we can do this like that. Girl, first name. And then last names. And Chinese first names. And Chinese last names. So let's save to see if we get any errors triggered. No errors. All right. Um, okay, so now let's work on the um, on the generate name function here. So let's do const generate name. All right. Um, all right, so first thing we're going to do is we need to know 
um, what the nationality, what the selected nationality is. We need to know what the selected gender is. We need to know if the if the person decided to include last name, and we are deconstructing all of that from our params. Okay, and now let's say let name equal to an empty string. All right. going to do let name is equal to an empty string we're going to say if nationality is equal to american we're going to do this is only going to be triggered if nationality is equal to American else it is Ch it is Chinese we're gonna do something else okay so if nationality is equal to American we're going to check for the gender if gender is equal to male if gender is equal to male I'm using uh, Tenary operators here. We're going to do name is equal to get random. Remember that get random function um, I created earlier. Get random. We're going to pass um, we're going to pass boy first names. And once we pass it, we're going to get the name all right because if you i don't know if i showed you uh my data each each field has a name so we're extracting the name okay so we're getting the name else if it is female we are throwing the same get random function but we are passing um girl first names and we are extracting the name from it all right so now that this is done all right we're gonna do if include last name we're gonna do name we're gonna do a little bit of extrapolation here if include last name we're gonna do name We're gonna do get. We're gonna pass um, the get random f again, but this time we're going to pass the last name array, and of course we are getting the name functions from it, and we are closing that. So that is if the nationality is American. What if it, it is Chinese? We're gonna do name is equal to get random. We are passing the Chinese first name. Again, we're getting the name. And we're gonna do if last name, this is only if include last name, um, we're going to do name. Actually, let's just copy this because it's pretty much the same thing. We're just going to change Chinese first name to Chinese last name, and boom, there we go. So now that we have the name, what are we doing with it? Right? Now that we have a name, we are passing it to set params. And we're doing a previous return. 
actually we're not doing all of that we're just gonna do spread operator we're gonna do params comma and we're gonna pass name is equal to name that's it all right so now that we have that one thing we got to do uh, when we click generate we also want to make sure that we change the picture the background picture so we're going to do set uh, BG and we're going to do random we're going to whoa set BG and then we're going to call the generate random picture function I'm going to pass that like this all right last but not least we are going to pass the generate function to our form passing generate function to our form we save um, and then we're going to just remove this remove that we save not getting any errors I want a male American I don't want last name included if I hit generate I've got Jesse Deardis if I hit generate again I have Reese Creben Demont Logsby Nev Cosby Arvin Kreber Giles Roylands Alyosha Hadigan, Alf Snowden, Waylon Perel, Lorenzo Bartoluti. I did not come up with these names myself. They were generated by good old Makaru. Now let's see what happens with the female names. Uh, Mer Wait, hold up. Why am I getting full names? uh-huh I'm getting full names here the reason why I'm getting full names let's go to my handle change because this is where this is happening we're gonna comment that out we're gonna add a condition okay I'm gonna say set params previous do return we're going to do previous and then for name we're going to do if name is equal to include last name Uh, we're not gonna do include last name let's say if it's not equal to include last name if it's not equal to include last name we're gonna say that equal to the value right um, else if it is in if it is equal if the name of the the the, the, the property that we're we're changing is the include last name um, it's pass it's gonna pass a string true or false but it's, it's gonna pass true or false but it's gonna pass it as a string so what we need to do is we need to uh, uh, we need to parse that um, into a boolean so we're going to go use JSON dot parse value All right, now let's try that again. So I have first name included. I'm sorry, last name included. I'm getting uh, Linny Turbill, female. Now let's. All right, guys. Um, I had to pause the video here for a little bit. Now, if you've been following along with me and you've done exactly what I've done you um you may or may not have noticed 
um, a mistake that I made a few minutes earlier. Now, if you have done what I've done, then you will encounter this mistake. However, uh, if you were lucky enough to have spotted that mistake and corrected it when I made it, then yeah, uh, your code is going to work just fine once you hit yes for, for the name, okay? However, um, I made the mistake. I did not catch it. So now, uh, when I click, when I when I click this next this scene right here, my screen goes blank. So I had to do a little bit of debugging to figure out exactly what went wrong. Okay. So if you did, if you did not notice uh, the mistake that I make, you're probably gonna have this error, and that's what we're gonna tackle in this next couple minutes right now. So back to regular programming the reason it was throwing an error is because I wasn't here it's not receiving true or false right let me show you um, I have it as yes or no if we hold on got a little bit of trigger happy here all right, so what we're going to do is reload, and it's going to be right here in front of you. See, the value that is passing is no, the value that it is passing is yes, right? That's, that's what's triggering the mistake, the, the error. Um, so we need to go back, and the value here, we need to change it to true. And over here, we need to change this to false. Now, if I click yes, let me clear that out. If I select yes, if I select no, if I select true, yes, it's going to give me the true here. Okay? All right, so now let's effectively change this. Let's clear this out. I'm selecting yes. It's passing is true. I'm selecting no. Passing is false. Now, if I hit generate, I'm not including last name. I'm only getting a first name, which is what I want. Um, no, we don't need this anymore. Brand, boy, American, no last name. Benjamin, boy, American, no last name. Let's change the gender. Dreddy, American girl, no last name. Christy, interesting spelling. Sasha, uh, Dawn, hmm. Modesta, Rosabel. All right. Now let's try Chinese. Uh, before we before we try uh, Chinese, let's try include last names with the girls. Carolyn Toth, Jenka Nebone, Neely Edland, Florenda Abelson. Let's do male. Ben Dennison, Haley. Camier, Lorgos, Kneebone, Niels, Pickles. Let's switch. We're not including the last name for Chinese. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Now, I don't speak Chinese, but I'm saying two sets of characters here. Let's see what happens when I include last name. That should at least be three. Yes, one, two, three. Here we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Um, probably should have added a, a title here, baby name generator, but mm. um, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. This has been a fun project um, 
got a little bit of debugging going on wasn't working out but we made it work uh, again in the comment um, if, if you have an idea of what you want to see uh, something you got stuck on leave it in the comment I'll be more than happy to tackle that and hope you learned something as I move in my journey to learn react myself um, like comment subscribe hit the bell thank you for your time and have a great evening